This is Kyle Hyman, and I am here with Miriam Schmitz, filling in for Andrew Serrani. Good morning. Good morning. Miriam is not only a sometimes fill-in for Andrea, mm-hmm. uh, was a substitute when she was on maternity leave, but also the producer of Truth and Charity with Bishop Rhodes. Yep. That's coming up on our one-year anniversary. Uh-huh. So Wednesday's episode, we're celebrating the anniversary with a little something special. We said... What should we do for the one-year anniversary? And Bishop said... Bring the kids in. <laughs> <laughs> he had fun when we had the high school students right. in the studio. And so... I was like, I will take that challenge on. Yeah. Challenge accepted. So we got together some of Redeemer Radio staff's kids mm-hmm. and some volunteers, a uh, board member, mm-hmm. and we got everything from second grade to sophomore in college. Right. Yeah, it was quite the cornucopia. Yeah. Cornucopia. <laughs> so, what should we start with? We got some clips to share with you, just as a tease, because you definitely want to listen to next Wednesday's episode. Right. Let's give a shout out to the guests who came. Okay. Okay. So, like you said, it was second grade through college. Let's start with second grade. Uh-huh. So, your oldest son, Sebastian, yeah. is one guest, did a great job. All the guests did a great job. Then there was Ellen Reedy. Uh huh who's in eighth grade preparing for confirmation. So like your son's preparing for first communion, Ellen's preparing for confirmation. So that has some nice. interesting connections there. Elementary school, middle school. And then high school, yep. Bryn Benzing was another one, a sophomore at Dwanger. And then my second oldest son, Jacob Schmitz, was is the college sophomore. So he was there as well. So elementary school, middle school, high school, college. Uh Uh-huh. Got it all covered. Yeah, it was really good. It was fun because they all have different personalities and obviously different ages. So there are different questions with that. So maybe we could start with, my son had some some good questions, I think. Oh, yeah. This one was a little bit more on the goofy side, which I kind of liked. Have you ever ridden a tractor before? Have I ever ridden a tractor? Yes. (laughs) As a matter of fact, you know, we have a lot of farms, farmers here in our diocese. And I visited one of our parishes where there's a lot of farmers, St. Louis Bizanson. Uh And they took me out on a big tractor and I got to ride through. I was amazed. It was so much fun. And how they were able to harvest the crops so fast and so much. Have you ever been on a tractor? A lot. (laughs) Oh, do you live on a farm, Sebastian? Well, no. No? But I have friends that live on a farm. Oh, so you visit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do they have farm animals, too? Yeah, they have pigs. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Smelly. Bad, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, last year, do you ever go to one of those, what do they call them when they have, oh, county fairs? Uh Uh-huh. I went to Elkhart County Fair last summer. (laughs) It was amazing how many people were there. And they had all these different areas with all these different animals, and I really enjoyed it till I got to this big building that had the pigs. (laughs) And I went in, I couldn't, I was gagging. The smell was so bad. I had to get out quick. (laughs) All right. So, do you like pigs? Sebastian? No, not at all. Do you like bacon? Kind of. That's where it comes from, you know. (laughs) Yeah, I know. (laughs) It was so good. I I just really enjoyed Bishop just being casual with the kids and asking questions and follow up and stuff. Uh, One of the questions that we had from Ellen Rady, I think, was a a really good question whenever I saw this one. What is the hardest thing you have to do as Bishop? Oh, wow. That's a good question, Ellen. The hardest thing, you know, I think probably when I have to give correction to to a priest, perhaps, or when there's a conflict between people or someone who's angry at the church, first of all, to be patient, but when there's a conflict, to mediate the conflict, to try to get people to make peace with each other and to get along. That is part of the job of a bishop, because whenever there's problems like that, you know, where do people turn to get a solution? They'll call the bishop or write a letter to the bishop. Sometimes people aren't happy with their priest, or sometimes people are upset about some teaching of the church, and somehow, you know, I have to patiently teach them or even correct them. I think that's the hardest part of being a bishop. Yeah. 
And then he would often follow up a question with asking his own questions. Right. So Bryn had asked him what his confirmation saint was, uh-huh. and then he followed up with something, and then it took a little twist that right. I wasn't expecting. <laughs> Who did you have as your confirmation name, Bryn? Um, I had St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. Oh, okay. That's great. First American-born saint. Why did you choose her? Uh, well, she's the patron saint of teachers, and back in eighth grade, I really thought about being like a teacher. Uh-huh. But then I did vacation Bible school this year, and that I don't want to be a teacher anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you have another career in mind? Uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure now that I think God's calling me to be a doctor. So, wow. Yeah. We've all been there, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe this isn't such a good idea. Right. Wait, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> and then your son Jacob was asking about Newman mm-hmm. organizations because right. uh, being a college student, that's what the the organization on a college campus is a lot of times called a Newman club or something like that. So he asked about that. So Newman groups are an uh, important tool for uh, myself and a lot of other college students. So I was just wondering what you thought uh, some good qualities of a Newman group were. <sighs> Jacob, that's a really good question because that's been one of my priorities since I became bishop here is trying to beef up our Catholic campus ministry and the Newman Newman clubs because we had some colleges in the diocese that there wasn't even anything going on for Catholic students. Mm-hmm. So we've really worked hard at that. So now we have things going on. But I, I think there's different things. You can go some places and it's basically just a social group. I think the social part is important to have activities that build community, but it has to be much more than that. So I would say, yes, they should have a social component, but they should also have a prayer or spiritual component and a intellectual component where there's further formation in the faith and education in the faith. So the ideal Newman Club, in my opinion, has all this as a balance so that they have activities where the students are not only praying together, but also learning how to pray. The various traditions that the church has of prayer, like meditating with the Holy Scriptures or praying the rosary, adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. I think a Newman Club should have those kinds of spiritual activities, helping the college students to deepen their relationship with Christ. And then I think there's the intellectual dimension. I mean, here they are in college and they're growing, you're growing in your knowledge of mechanical engineering and and all the other subjects you're studying. Well, one should also be growing during college in knowledge of the faith. Now, some who aren't at Catholic colleges like yourself, there may not be opportunities to take good theology courses. So I think that's where Newman Club should have some educational opportunities where you can delve more deeply into different aspects of the faith, mysteries of the faith, especially things that might be on your mind, what what are on the minds of young adults. So I would say all of those. And then the fourth area also that I always encourage is to have some service that not to just be a self-enclosed group. So even though you're getting together for socials, getting together for prayer or for theological enrichment, but also how are you giving of yourselves to others? Because that's integral to our faith, that we're not to be just self-centered. We're to reach out, especially to the poor and the needy. So I encourage Newman Clubs to do things, to do some activities to help the sick or the suffering, the disabled, the poor of the community, and then to be committed to it. It's really those four areas. You know, you need good leadership and you need a good core group to plan these kinds of things. And then from on the diocesan level, we try to assist. Sometimes there's a priest chaplain or a priest that's somewhat involved or maybe very involved. But we also need the college students themselves to assume leadership in the group. I think that's really important too. Then we have different formation things. There's some good national programs like Focus where we can send the campus ministry or the Newman Club leaders to these different events where they can learn from others who are in that kind of ministry or from other college students who are leaders at their respective universities. So thank you for that question. He did such a good job of answering that. I think the whole time that he was explaining that 
Sebastian was like getting up and walking around. Was he? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was trying. He was asking me questions, but, but like mouthing them. Aww, <laughs> I did not catch that. <laughs> but it, it was so fun. I, you have to catch that again. This is Truth and Charity one year anniversary episode that's going to be happening Wednesday at noon. Uh-huh. And so tune in for that. Um, also, all the past episodes for this whole past year are available in the Redeemer Radio app, or if you go to redeemerradio.com slash Ask Bishop. You can listen to them there, or you can submit your question for yes, a future please. episode. Yeah. We're actually, bringing, speaking of college students, he talked about that really being a focus and that he really wants to look at what the diocese is doing for young adults, not just college students, but those that are, don't go to college or those that have graduated as well. Uh-huh. And so we're actually going to do an entire episode with young adults. Right. So the Truth and Charity one year anniversary is going to air, like you said, July 11th. And then the following Wednesday, July 18th, we're going to bring in a panel of four young adults. They're all from the South Bend area to kind of engage in a conversation, them with Bishop Rhodes, what their concerns are, what they would like to see happen, what Bishop would like to see happen. So it's it's going to be a really good episode. And then also Sean Allen, who's the director of Young Adult Ministry for our diocese, will be there. So yeah. be sure to tune in to that. We have a lot of different things we're looking at and different uh, ways to engage people with Bishop and also give Bishop an opportunity to highlight some different things that are happening in the diocese. So we've got a lot of ideas on how things might be changing a little bit and restructuring and, and offering a little variety. But also if you have any suggestions, let us know or any questions, Yep. you know, we would love to, to hear about that. Yes. Um, also, one of the things that we did with the kids to kind of break the ice was we invited them to bring their favorite snack mm-hmm. or treat. And so this actually happened during a break. I don't know if it's going to make it in the final cut or not, but uh, Bishop's one of Bishop's favorite food is olives. Uh-huh. And so somebody brought olives. Uh, right. Sebastian brought marshmallows. Uh huh. I don't know how well those pair together, but coming up, Bishop will answer more questions from our young people right here on Truth and Charity with Bishop Rhodes, brought to you in part by Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. Time for olives and cheese. Yeah. Okay. No. Yes, this is the eat break. <laughs> <laughs> you want to you wanna offer them to everybody else? Mm-hmm. Go around and offer your marshmallows, see if anybody wants one. Okay. Olives and marshmallows. Olives and mar- that's a good combination. Meal of champions. Daddy. I think you need more sugar to get more wound up. <laughs> you got it, bye. I'm good for right now, thank you. <laughs> Sebastian, think about what question you want to ask next, okay? And you, you need to take it easy on the marshmallows. <laughs> He just, kept, he just kept on eating marshmallows the whole time while Bishop's talking. Just marshmallows going to his Yeah, head. I love how Bishop said, have some more marshmallows. And you're like, take it easy on the marshmallows. <laughs> it's yeah. like the struggle. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, <laughs> But yeah, it, was, it was so fun. Uh, I was really grateful that Bishop was open to that. Yeah. And I think it ended up being a, a great episode. Again, that'll be Wednesday at noon. Tune into that. Uh, also, if you know anybody that listens to podcasts, if you listen to podcasts, you can subscribe to Truth and Charity or The Kyle Hyman Show or Dr. Doctor mm-hmm. or Church Life Today. All of our local programming are available not only in the Redeemer Radio app, not only at RedeemerRadio.com, but also wherever you get podcasts. And so you can subscribe and then they would automatically download and, and you have access to that. So spread the word. It's very convenient. We've got so many great shows. Uh, we need more people to be listening, more people exposed to this because it's, it's great information that I think Catholics need to hear. So Right. And we're actually running a little short on questions for Bishop. So if you have something that you've always wanted to ask, you can submit it, like you said, at RedeemerRadio.com slash AskBishop. Yep. You can remain anonymous if you want. Look on the lookout for more. Yep, great. All right, well, thank you so much, Miriam, for joining us My and pleasure. doing so much work for Truth and Charity. 